Hello guys, I'm Sandeep. I'm a physics faculty at Ask ITNs and uh, today we are going to continue our chapter uh, that motion and uh, time, right? Okay. So we already completed the two sessions of this chapter uh, for motion and time uh, in the first chapter. What is already in the first chapter? That uh, very important concept that frame of reference, where is the observer, right? I told you that we are not at rest, even though we are sitting in our home. Are we in a rest? I can say its answer could be yes or no, and both are correct. Why? Because it depends on frame of reference. Where is the observer, right? Observer is going to decide whether you are uh, in motion or at rest, right? That's right. Then we also studied about the uh, average speed, then the velocities, then distances, displacement, how to calculate the average velocity and average speed, what are the differences between those, and uh, acceleration, right? Acceleration is in our, our normal acceleration, we can say. We do provide to our bike or car, it is our normal acceleration, right? And uh, if you do in second session, in second session, we talked about the kinematic equations, right? So we also learn how to measure the height of our building, right? Using only the stopwatch and small stone, you can say, right? I hope you have tried that practically, right? And you have measured that uh, height of your building, right? So good. So then now we also studied, uh, there are three kinematic equations, right? Anybody remember the kinematic equations? Yes. Hello, let's try to recall kinematic equations. So we have seen that uh, there were three kinematic equations. First one is V is equal to U plus AT. Second one is which one? S is equal to UT plus half AT square. And third one is V square is equal to U square plus two AS. What is the initial velocity U? U is the Initial velocity, you can say that's right. B is the final velocity. T is our normal time. A is acceleration. Right? So, N, yes, is displacement, obviously. Right? We, we are, have already seen these things, right? Tell me, I have, we also learned one, one thing. G, what is G? G is acceleration due to gravity. What is the value? 9.8 meter per second square, right? Okay. So today we are going to solve uh, one example on this where we have to use this uh, G, right? G is acceleration, right? So I can also say G is acceleration. Now, remember, whenever we are solving this kinematic equation, we are going to use um, directions also, right? Direction and signs are also important, right? So now consider this is the building. Now, when we say the stone is released, we haven't seen the directions right in the previous session. Now let's talk a little bit about the directions too. So we are going to uh, use some notation, sign convention. Sign conventions mean whether it is it should be negative or positive. Remember, we are going to say now upward. Anything is upward, then we are going to say it is positive. Anything is downward, let's call that as negative. Now tell me acceleration due to gravity. G is acting towards center of the earth or can I say it is acting downward? Yes. So remember value of G we are going to take it as negative. Negative 9.8 or approximately we can also consider it as negative 10 meter per second. Right? So that will make our calculations easier. Okay. Simple. Then if this tone is moving downward, what I can say? If the stone is moving downward, I can say the displacement is also negative, right? Because it is downward and downward is negative. Then velocity is downward. What I can say? Velocity will also be negative in that case. Okay. So now uh, we are going to use this sign convention and let's try to solve one question. Right now, uh, I know that you went onto the terrace and released the ball or stone downward. Then you got your answer, right? Now, let's consider one more uh, case here. Suppose you're on the ground and you throws the ball upward, let's say. 
obviously here you can say that initial velocity was zero when you release the stone if you want to throw the ball upward you it cannot be zero right there must be some value of u let's take a uh, 20 meter per second right okay so first of all i want to know we are going to use the g is equal to minus 10 okay first of all i want to know uh, at up to which height it will go obviously it will sometime it will after some time it is going to come back in your hands right if you throw the ball upward it's not like that it is going upward always right it will come down to your hand so can i say at some particular point <laughs> That ball is going upward, so it has the positive velocity when it uh, when the ball is going upward. When it reaches at the maximum height, tell me velocity is decreasing or increasing when it is going up? Yes, velocity you can observe it is decreasing. So there must be one point at the highest level where the velocity becomes zero, right? Okay, and then this ball is again going to come back. So let me represent it in the second diagram. So it will come back here. Okay, so here velocity, this this is the same same position, right? I have just shown two different instances there, or two different diagrams there, right? But those are the same thing we can say. So initially, ball started with the velocity 20 meter per second, and it reaches at the highest point where the velocity is how much? Zero. Then it is again going to come back. Right now, velocity is increasing, right? When you catches the ball, it has some velocity also. Who is uh, doing this whole motion? Who is performing this whole motion? Is remember the acceleration that is a is equal to g is responsible, or let's call this as minus g because now we know that uh, we are going to consider the minus sign here. So a is equal to minus g is responsible for all this motion. G is responsible for slowing down that ball. G is responsible for taking that ball uh, again to your and right okay so now let's uh, make two now this whole one motion right you throw the ball like this consider you throw the ball it went up and again it is coming down right so this is the motion um, it come back to your hands again right now let's make the two parts when it is going up and now let's say when it is coming down there are two parts okay in first part consider let's mark out what the values we know for the first part, part, can I say u is equal to how much? 20 meter per second upward, so positive. What about acceleration is uh, downward acceleration? Remember whether the ball is going upward or downward. In both the cases, acceleration is always downward. Can I say acceleration is minus 10 meter per second square? Okay. We don't know how much distance it has covered, but I do know that velocity at the highest point is how much? Zero meter per second square. Right. So now using this relation, let's calculate how much is the time uh, taken to reach at the highest point. Right. I have the three equations. Which uh, option? Which kinematic equation I can use? I can see some kinematic equation here. Right. Three kinematic equation. Hopefully you must have memorized all those three kinematic equations right now. Okay. So yes, we can use the v is equal to u plus 18. Let's try to substitute the values. V is 0. U is 20, right? Acceleration is minus 10. And T we want to calculate. So let's let me modify this equation a little bit. So this T will become negative, negative sign will get cancelled. 20 upon 10. Can I say it is 2 seconds. So it take 2 seconds to reach at the topmost point. Right? Let's try this one also. Mm. Simple, very simple logical thing you can tell me that if it takes two seconds to move upward, how much time it will take to come back to the ground? Obviously, t is equal to two seconds. So in second case, I can say t is equal to two seconds. What is the initial velocity for second? Now we are starting the motion from the top point and uh, to the ground or your hand. So u is equal to how much? This v now will become our u, right? So u is equal to zero. What is a? Acceleration is not changing. Now let's calculate v from here. Again, we can use v is equal to u plus 80. u is how much? 0. a is minus 10. Right? And uh, we want to calculate v, right? And this is 2. So v becomes minus 20 here. Why it is? it does have the minus sign? Because now you can see the velocity's direction is where? 
downward. So can I say the by magnitude, the ball reaches with the same velocity uh, at which it is thrown upward or projected, we can say. Real simple. Right? Now we are going to make three cases here. I want to find out the displacement. Displacement means this one, right? T is equal to one, T is equal to two, and uh, T is equal to three. These are the three instances for where now I want to find the displacement. And remember one more thing, I also want to calculate distance too. Okay? So T is equal to one means uh, this is the original motion. Consider that ball will be somewhere here, right? At T is equal to one. At T is equal to two, we know that this is the boy. It's an icon and so say T is equal to two somewhere. T is equal to three will be somewhere here. We don't know. Okay. So let's calculate the this yes formula, right? So for the first case, when we are using yes is equal to one, t is equal to one, t is equal to two, right? Or t is equal to three. We can use the same formula. So let's use for first equation, yes is equal to ut plus half a t square. U is how much initial for the first case or whole case we can use that 20 into one minus one half into 10 into one square, right? So that becomes 20 minus five or 15, 15 meters. So it will travel 15 meter in first second. Let's talk about T is equal to two. So yes is equal to, again, I know the formula UT plus one half AT square. It substitute the value 20 into two minus one half into 10 into two square, simple. So this becomes how much 40 minus, let's say 20 is. So let's say 20 meter. So we know that T is equal to two seconds. It was reached at the highest point, topmost point. So now this 20 is what? 20 is nothing but this displacement, right? Highest displacement. Ball can, uh, will not go further than this one. Okay. Let's also find out for um, this T is equal to three seconds. Okay. Where I can write. <coughs> okay. Let me. Let me take this out. Right now we know this part. Chill. For t is equal to this, t is equal to two seconds. Yeah, so this is t is equal to two seconds. And t is equal to three seconds. Now we want to calculate this one. Okay. So what I can say, s is equal to ut plus half a t square. Let's try using this formula again. 1 half a t square, this is 20 into 3 minus 1 half. Why I'm taking the minus sign, you know that, right? Because 10 is negative, 3 square. So I will say this is 60, 3 square is 9. And 10 by 2 is 5, 9, 5 are 43. So 15 meter, what you can see? That at t is equal to 1, I got the 15, t is equal to 220, and t is equal to 3 again, displacement is reduced. Why it is reducing the displacement after three seconds? Because ball is going again backward, right? And displacement is what? Displacement is was is the shortest distance between initial and final. Our initial point is this always. And uh, in third case, if this is the initial point, this will be the final point. So this distance is how much? 15 meter. Therefore, we got the displacement 15. Now let's talk about the distance. D. What is the distance covered in the one first second? Remember, as long as motion is in a straight line, right? As long as velocity does not change, distance and displacement are same. So for one second, it is going into same thing. So 15 meter. For two seconds, yes, distance is again 20 meter because it hasn't changed the velocity's direction. But for the three second, third second, it has changed the velocity. So how to calculate the distance in this case? Simple formula I can remember is the maximum distance plus or simply what I can say, total distance, upward distance, right? So total or let's say maximum distance plus distance traveled in, traveled in remaining seconds. So how much time it took to go to the upward position? Two seconds, right? So, so I think this is in two seconds, we can say. And this remaining time means one second. So maximum distance in two seconds is how much? 20 meter. 
plus how much distance is it has traveled in one second so from the top we are supposed to calculate right so if this is the 15 for that i can use the second cases only second case for second case and let's take already two seconds are done right so only one second is remaining we want to calculate for one second so now consider this second case here what i can say it's uh, let's say here it will be similar to like this right u is equal to zero at the top we are again i will repeat that we are considering from the top point to the bottom point time is given one second why in one second why not three seconds because two seconds are already done so u is equal to zero t is equal to one acceleration is equal to minus 10 and we want to calculate yes right so now let's calculate yes is equal to ut plus r t square can i say this is zero minus one half into 10 into one square so this will become minus three so displacement is minus five negative sign shows what it is going downward but when we are calculating distance, we don't need the minus sign, right? So remember, this is, we can consider this as my, mod of yes. Mod of yes means if you got the negative sign, convert it into the positive sign, then write the answer. So 25 meter. Okay. So this is the distance and displacement difference. We can see that uh, we already have seen in the first session, right? Distance could be greater than displacement here you can see in the three seconds displacement was 15 but distance covered was 25 so a very important question one of the important question you can say right so you can remember this question <laughs> okay so so this will clear most of your concepts of the animatic equations as well as the vertically upward motion which have the minus g as the acceleration right good so so then, now let's see what we are going to do today. So we are going to draw some distance time graph right, and velocity time graph. If you do remember in the previous session, when we are actually solving, uh, we are actually deriving those kinematic equations, right? Three kinematic equations are there. We derived all those things using one graph. Which graph was that? Do you remember that? And so velocity time graph, right? And uh, I also told you some important concepts for those. We are going to uh, again uh, do this concept. We are again going to see those concepts, right? Those are important concepts, obviously. Right? So today we are going to plot the distance time graph as well as velocity time graph for different, let's say, motions. Okay. So, so let's see, first of all, what is the distance time graph? Yes. So here you can see. Some graphs are there. Uh, on y axis, there is a distance, and uh, on x axis, time is there. Right? So, whenever we say that we want to plot the distance time graph, you can take a very simple example. Consider home, your home and school, right? That is our simplest example. So, you do remember we have talked this in the first session also. This is your school building. This is your home. What is the distance in between those? That's uh, two kilometer. Okay. Now, we want to plot what? Distance time graph. Okay. So, consider, um, let's take this as instead of two kilometer, let's take it now five kilometer, right? Let's increase the distance. And so you are now going to college, right? College is further away from school. Okay, now consider one day, uh, don't go to the school. Reason could be anything. You haven't done your homework, you're afraid to teacher, you haven't completed, you, you, are, you are not prepared for the taste, or you are genuinely sick, right? Could be anything, but you didn't go to the school, right? So tell me at let's say t is equal to, Mm, five kilometers, so you know, consider one half an hour. Five kilometers per hour. Okay. So, what we can say, consider t is equal to normally, or uh, consider you leave for the your school or college at let's say 10 a.m. Okay. Okay. So, we are going to consider this as your reference point. 
let's say t is equal to zero at this particular time at 10 am speed is equal to zero or uh, t is equal to zero at 10 am right we are going to start our clock from let's say 10 am okay normally you do go to the school say five kilometers so considering let's say 10 kilometer you need 10 minutes for one kilometer normally you do reach there by let's say 50 in 50 minutes okay so normally in 50 minutes you reach at the school right so at 10 50 am i can say right and 10 50 am you reach at the school but now, as we know that you are not going to school today, right? So let's see. What I'm going to do, I'm going to plot some graphs here. Let's say this is our origin where we are starting and say consider now your home is at two kilometers. Okay. So I'm going to plot the 10 minutes, 10 minutes. So on the time axis, so this is 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, right? Normally you go to school, but today we are not going to school. So let's say at t is equal to 10 a.m. means basically when we say t is equal to zero, where uh, you are at distance what from origin? Consider this is our reference point, right? You are at two kilometer. Let's say this is two kilometer. So where are you at uh, from origin? You are at two kilometers. So can I plot one my Let's also try to draw a small table here. Let's t versus distance so at zero you are at two kilometer at after 10 minutes after 10 minutes you're not going anywhere so can i say it is you are at two kilometer after 20 same 30 same 40 same 50 same so i can plot the graph uh, points on the graph like this zero two zero two means x axis zero y axis two similarly second x axis 10 y axis two you can see like this this will be another point for 22. Yes, let's spot this one. 32, 42, and 52. So these are the points, right? We know how to plot the graph now. So from this line, obviously they are already shown that line passing through it. So what you are getting, you are getting the straight line through these all points. So what I can say, the graph of distance versus time when the object is at rest, is a straight line parallel to x axis. Very simple to understand. That's correct. Okay, so this is the first graph of distance versus time. We can see now. Let's consider your second second graph. Second graph, you can see. Let's say this is the line, and uh, let's see whether we are getting the same thing. Now, instead of considering this as reference, consider this is our reference. That is origin, right? And now. Let's plot the tomorrow's graph. For tomorrow, you are going to school, obviously. So consider at 10 equal to AM, uh, 10 AM, it is T is equal to zero. We are considering, right? So you take the 10 minutes to reach one kilometer. Consider five kilometer is distance to your school or college, right? You need 10 minutes to uh, go one kilometer. Okay, so I'm going to plot something like that. So this is 10, 20. 30, 40, let's say this is 50 point here. Similarly, this is one kilometer, two, this is two kilometer, three kilometer, four kilometer, yeah, this is three, let's say this is four, and this is five. So let, first of all, we'll need that small table, right? Like this one. Okay, so let me draw the table here. So table of, T versus D. So now tomorrow you are going to school in zero. I mean, T is equal to zero. You are at it home. Now we are taking the reference point. Reference point means origin. So at T is equal to zero, you are at zero. Simple. Now consider in 10 minutes, you completed one kilometer. In 20 minutes, you completed how much? Two kilometer. In 30 minutes, three kilometer. In 40, four kilometer. 50, five kilometer. So can I say? That in every 10 minutes, you are completing, uh, you are covering the one kilometer on your bicycle or bike, you can say. Right? So let's plot this graph. 0, 0 is your 10 versus 1. This is the point 22, 
and 55. Right? So again, if you draw the line, you will get the straight line like this. So this is called as uniform motion, uniform motion, or we can say uniform velocity in this case. So what is happening actually in this case, you are covering the same distance in same amount of time. Very simple to understand, right? Okay, because in every 10 minutes you are going uh, five kilometer. So can I say your speed on the bike or the speedometer is constant, right? It did not change at all, okay? Okay, so, so by bicycle, let's say you're going, so speed will be constant. Now let's consider the third case. This is the non-uniform motion. Uniform motion means remember, or let's write here, in the first graph, velocity is zero. Why? We are, you are not moving, right? You are at rest. You are at home that day. So velocity was zero. I can also say acceleration is also zero. In second graph, I can say, yes, velocity is zero. If the velocity is zero, acceleration will also be zero in that case. Okay. So remember that part. And for non-uniform motion, now let's consider same thing. If at t is equal to zero, right? If you cover, let's say one kilometer. So in 10 minutes you reach, uh, reach you covered one, right? Okay. But in another 10 minutes, consider instead of uh, normally we cover only one kilometer. Now consider if in another 10 minutes, you cover, let's say 15 kilometer, sorry, 1.5 kilometer. So if this is two, this is three, I can say this is 1.5 or something. So you'll reach here in another 10 minutes. Okay. So let me plot one table also here. What we are saying in T is T and T versus T. So in zero, at when the time is zero, you are at zero. In 10 minutes, you cover one kilometer. That's good. That's our normal case. But in another 10 minutes, means when the 20 minutes happened, you covered uh, another 1.5 kilometers. So you reaches 2.5 kilometers. Right? In another 10 minutes, you covered tot an another 2.5 kilometers. So you reached 5 kilometers. So this is 3, this is 4, this is let's say 5. So in 30 minutes, you are going to reach here. So this will be the graph. You can plot, it will look something like this. So what you can see, your velocity is not constant at this time. You are increasing your velocity. How? Because you are covering more distances in 10 minutes. No? Initially, you just covered how much? One kilometer in 10 minutes. In next 10 minutes, you covered 1.5. In another 10 minutes, you covered oh, remaining 2.5. You reached at the school at instead of reaching at 10.50, you reached in 30 minutes only, in 10.30. Right? So, in that case, your velocity was... Okay, this is constant, right? This is not zero, this is constant. Here, velocity is not constant, right? Or I can say acceleration is not zero. So there is some acceleration. If you are increasing velocity, I know. Now we know how to increase the velocity, right? Give some acceleration. Then only we can increase the velocity, okay? So this is what we can actually talk about the distance and time graph, right? So if you know the data like that, then you can easily calculate the graphs. And obviously those all graphs matches like here, right? What we should remember in this case, in first case, velocity was zero, acceleration was zero. In second case, velocity was constant, acceleration was zero. In third case, velocity was not constant. Velocity was increasing in this case, I can say. So obviously we are supposed to give some acceleration to it. Then only we can get this types of graphs okay Shalom. so this is the thing about the distance time graph uh, the important things which you should remember about this one is uh, slope let me write it here slope of distance distance let's represent it d or let's say yes yes t graph gives velocity is the meaning of that slope means uh, yesterday we have learned how to calculate the slope now consider this is the graph 
for this graph, I want to calculate slope. What should I do? Then take any two points. Consider let's let me take this point and this point. Write down the coordinates. X coordinate is how much for this is 40 and Y coordinate is 4. Okay, here uh, X coordinate is 10 and Y coordinate is 1. I know how to calculate slope. Slope is, I told you the formula yesterday, Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Okay, Y2 is how much? 4 minus 1. Let's give the unit also, right? Uh, for y, y axis unit has kilometer and uh, x axis is how much? 40. x2 is 40 minus 30. It is minute, right? This is minute. 40 minus 10, I guess. So I can say this is 3 kilometer per 30 minutes. 30 minutes means how many hours? How many hours? 30 minutes means uh, half hour. So you are, if you are covering, I can say slope is nothing, but slope is what? Uh, speed, right? Or velocity, we can say. So this is 3 kilometer per, can I say half hour instead of uh, 30 minutes? Yes. So let's take that 2 upward, right? So I can say this is 6 kilometer per hour. So you are going on your bicycle with 6 kilometer per hour. So slope gives the velocity at any point. Consider even in this graph also, how to calculate the now there is a different method to calculate the slope. In this case, this is the theta. They will provide you the theta. Let's say theta is equal to 60 degree. And uh, we know one formula for slope is this one. There is another formula for slope. Slope is equal to tan theta. So tan theta will give you, let's say tan 60. Tan 60 is root 3 kilometer per minute in this case, right? Because our kilometer per minute here. Okay. So in this case, this velocity, when we calculate the velocity like this, there is not a straight line. It is not a straight line. Then remember this velocity is instantaneous velocity. Let me write this as when we calculate the slope using tan theta, this velocity is what? Instantaneous. And if you calculate a slope like this, if this is a straight line, obviously if it is a straight line, you can say it is average velocity or even instantaneous velocity is also going to be very same when it is a uniform motion. Okay. So these are the some points you should remember. Slope of the ST graph gives you velocity. Okay. So now let's move to the, our next point that is velocity time graph. Okay. So you already know how to calculate the time graph or displacement time graph. Now let's see how we can actually calculate the velocity time graph. Okay. So first of all, tell me one thing. Consider if you are at rest, right? If you are at rest, velocity is how much? Zero. Right. So for same table, let's let me add one more column here for velocity. Velocity is at every point. Velocity is how much? You are at rest, no? So can I say velocity is zero everywhere? So if you are at rest, I can draw one graph for velocity versus time. For our same thing, let's say 10 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 and 50, right? So for 50 minutes, we are drawing the graph velocity is how much for every every minute velocity was zero so it will be like this so can i say this is our graph when you are at rest you are not going to school right at that day simple okay so at rest remember a graph will look something like this it is just on the time axis you can say and uh, also one thing we should note here is velocity is zero. So how much is the acceleration if velocity is zero? And I say acceleration is also zero. Very simple, right? Okay. Now let's talk about the second case. Second case was how, what, uh, what was the second case? Your velocity was constant. How much was the velocity? Six kilometer per hour. We calculated that using the slope, right? And it is uniform. Uniform means what? At every minute, it was six kilometer per hour. Let, uh, let me add one more uh, column here. So at zero, we can say we started with six kilometer per hour, six, 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 six. So everywhere it is six kilometer per hour. So what I can say for 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, or even also for zero. 
our velocity was how much? Six kilometers. So graph will we can plot some points like this. Okay, and what I can say, let's uh, join these points. So for uniform velocity, this is called as uniform velocity. If you do remember, for EST graph, we got the line like this. If you do remember, right? For uniform velocity, this is the different graph. This is velocity versus time graph. So whenever in exam, you got a question on the graph, first of all, observe which graph is that. It's, it's EST graph or VT graph. Means displacement versus time graph or velocity versus time graph. Because graph changes, we have seen that for uniform velocity, graph was different for EST. And here, here it is different, right? Now, one more thing I can say here, velocity is constant, right? And here, acceleration is zero. Because velocity is constant, you are not uh, giving some acceleration to bike or car or your bicycle, right? So therefore, we can see something like that. Okay. Then, now we have also seen um, increasing velocity graph, right? So velocity, you are increasing the velocity, right? That uh, you are reaching the school at the least time. If you do remember the graph was something like that. So this was your graph, okay? So remember here, velocity is increasing. Acceleration, I can say positive. Positive means what? You are increasing the velocity, right? For car, I told you yesterday, for car or bike, when you are increasing the acceleration, you are putting the pedal, uh, you are pushing that pedal of the acceleration, acceleration is positive. You are applying brake, means acceleration is a is positive. You are applying the brake means A is negative because you are decreasing the velocity. So remember these two things. Okay. So if now you are increasing your acceleration, velocity will increase and the graph will look something like this. Okay. So you can remember like this. So these are some uh, velocity versus time graph we can say. And, uh, Yes, we can also draw the graph if the acceleration is negative, means if the velocity is negative, right? Or we can say velocity is decreasing, we can also draw graph for that too, right? So if this is increasing graph, decreasing graph will look something like this. Okay, just a minute. This is a velocity time graph, no? If, if the acceleration is constant, graph will look something like this. Right, not the uh, curve line. Okay, if the velocity is increasing mm, or acceleration is constant, remember for constant, even uh, in this graph, also you can see acceleration constant. If the acceleration is constant, you are going to get the straight line like this. If the acceleration is zero, we know here acceleration is zero, but velocity is there, right? So there must be some steady speed like this, right. Remember, if there is a deceleration, deceleration means negative acceleration. This is also called as deceleration or retardation. Right? For retardation and if the A is constant, let me draw one graph here. For retardation, mm, yeah, graph will look something like this. You can see the velocity is decreasing, but retardation is negative here. Here it was positive. Let me draw one graph, a line here. Yes, it will be like this. So this is the first graph. Can I say this is second graph? This is my third graph and this is my fourth graph. Okay. So if the velocity is decreasing, acceleration here, it was acceleration was positive and constant. Here acceleration was negative, but constant. Therefore, we are getting the straight line. Remember, whenever there is a constant acceleration, we are going to get the straight line. Here you can see the straight line. Here also straight line. Why? Acceleration is constant. When there is an uh, increasing acceleration, increasing acceleration means you are going to get something like this. Or, okay. Or decreasing acceleration. Decreasing acceleration means you know, also velocity uh, will increase up to some point. Right? We are not going to go into the detail of that increasing and decreasing acceleration. But uh, you can remember if the acceleration is increasing, then uh, obviously speed is also increasing. Right? Like that. Okay. So these are the more four important graphs we can see. Okay. And uh, if you combine all this graph, it will look velocity time graph will look something like this.
Okay. Now, one more thing, two important things we can remember in this case is, right? So remember, or oh, let me keep it here. This is also the important point. This is deceleration, right? Or retardation. Let's move them now. I can write here that slope. Slope of velocity time graph. This is a velocity time graph, right? Represents acceleration. Actually, we have seen this uh, statement in the yest or the previous lecture also, right? Slope of the velocity time graph represents acceleration. And we know how to draw calculate the slope. Slope's formula is what? Y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Very simple, right? And one more thing we have seen in the previous session that area of the velocity time graph represents distance or displacement. Okay. So we have already covered this too in the previous session also. We are not going to go into detail of that. Right now, but we know these concepts, right? So this is the velocity time graph. So uh, what are the different graphs we can plot? Also, what is the slope represents? What is the area represents? These are some important things we should remember in this case. Okay. Good. Then let's move to the next one. So. Velocity time graph and displacement time graph. If you know these things, we can find out uh, how the how we can actually solve the questions. So let, let's try this question. Right. So they have given the velocity time graph and uh, find the corresponding displacement time graph. Okay. So how to relate velocity time graph with the displacement time graph? We are going to see this very important concept. Right. So, so let's try to solve this type of question. Right. So, if the velocity is increasing from O to A, there are four, uh, how many portions? One, two, three, four. So, we want to plot the graph for four different things, right? So, if the velocity is increasing, what should be the graph look like, right? So, so let's see what the EST graphs, distance time graph. Tell me, there are three graphs. Which one shows the velocity is increasing, right? Increasing velocities, our consider this is my first graph. This is second. Let's say this is third. Obviously, third graph represents me the velocity is increasing, right? It is something like that curve. Curve is there. So, what we are going to do? Let's try this one. So, from O to A, if the velocity is increasing, right? And I want to draw a yes, T curve. Let's say this is S yes versus T curve. Can I say the graph will look something like this? I mean, it's going to be same, but what is the, um, let's say displacement in that case, we have to calculate that. How we can calculate that? Remember this question is going to clear a lot of your concepts. So focus very clear, uh, carefully here. So consider only O2A. We are also going to use some um, kinematic equations also here, right? So consider first, let's O2A. When we are considering O2, can you tell me what is the initial velocity looking at the graph? Initial velocity is zero, right? What about the um, final velocity? Can I say final velocity is at A point, it is 10. What is the time? Time is two seconds, we can see here. So this is meter per second. And what I want displacement, we want to calculate how much displacement is there. How to do that? Let's calculate the A first. So what I can say, V is equal to U plus AT, right? So using this formula, if I substitute U is zero, A is, we want to calculate A first. So A into T is two and V is 10. Simple. So can I say A is equal to 10 by two or is equal to five meter per second squared? Simple. We could, have, we could also have calculated using the slope of the graph. Right. Slope means what? Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. There for that, we need two points. This first point represents 210, and this is 00. 
simple so either use the kinematic equation or this one okay sure then we also need the displacement how to calculate displacement there are again two ways i can use this ds is equal to ut plus half at square or i can also use the area under the curve means this oa curve will give me the displacement simple let's try in both ways let's see whether we are getting the same answer now u is zero so this whole term is becoming zero one half into this is five into time square is two square so can i say this is so uh, 10 meter let's say displacement is 10 meter and let's find out using the area area of triangle oa let's name this point as p so for triangle oap one half into base into height right this is our formula so how much is the base base is op so one half into how much 2 into height is 10 so can i say 10 yes you can see 10 meter in both the cases we are getting the same displacement so we and we also know that we should draw a curve like this so this will be our curve and uh, here we are going to get 10 okay after that so this is whole about the a uh, o to a right then after that ab let's talk about a to b right i will write it here let's say a to b what will happen either again we can use the kinematic equations or we can use our area under the curve formula also okay so first of all tell me how the graph should look like if the uniform velocity is there uniform velocity means for uniform velocity we will need the graph of uh, displacement time let's check it out for displacement time graph where is that graph uniform velocity yes this is uniform velocity so it is a straight line for est graph right so when the for velocity time graph here you can check for velocity uniform velocity you have the straight line for the straight line est graph becomes like this one right line incline line okay so we should also get some graph like that it is it should be a straight line and what is the displacement it's calculate so yes is what can i say let's calculate the area only now area abpq let me write this as abpq so area of rectangle abpq now i think it is very easy for you this is a uh, uh, height or we can say one length is 10 into base means what 4 minus 2 right so can i say 2 let's say 20 So how much is the displacement in this a to b part, or two to four second? It is twenty meter. So already ten was there. What we have to do? Mark the plus twenty. That will become thirty, right? So I can show the straight line like this. Very simple. Right? B to C. Can you see it is similar to O to A? So we should need we need that curve curve thingy, but we will need the area. so let's calculate the area from b to c yes now it is trapezium we know the formula for trapezium 1/2 into sum of the parallel sides parallel side means how much is this line 10 plus 20 so can i say this is 10 plus 20 yes into height height means this part it is 2 right so this becomes 30 meter simple so already we have covered 30 it is again going upward by 30 so somewhere here let's say 60 and uh, graph is it straight line no we know for this graph is like this okay now from for c to d right for c to d what is happening velocity is decreasing graph is a uh, little bit different right velocity is decreasing right but we don't know whether the Mm, velocity is decreasing we uh, one more one thing we are very sure that uh, acceleration is decreasing right but what about the displacement are we going down no we have to find the displacement like again, again let's say uh, area and as long as that area is upward the axis this time axis remember displacement is not negative displacement is not negative means this it we are not going down like this Whether the still velocity graph, uh, velocity time graph graph shows us downward, but no, we are not going down like this. Okay, so remember how we are actually going in this case. First of all, let's calculate the area. So for C to D, I will calculate the area C to D here. It will be one half into triangle. So base into height, I know that part. 
Base is how much? Eight minus six two. Height is how much? Twenty. Can I say twenty meter? Yes, twenty meter is correct. So we are going upward. It is not negative, right? As long as it is not negative, we should go upward. So it will be eighty like that. Time is how much? Eight second. How the graph show? Now we can normally you can see if the velocity time graph was this, we got the curve like this, right? If the velocity time graph is like this, how should the curve look like? It should look something like this. Okay, so this is your your sticker, right? For the whole motion of this, so you can convert the graph from dt to st like this. Okay, so you have to apply all the concepts here. Either you can go by kinematic equations, or you can also calculate the displacement by area also, right? So I have shown you the both the ways and how to calculate the graph, how to draw the graph, shapes of the graph in velocity and st. We have seen those things also. They changes. So you should also note this part. Next, so let's try to solve this question. Displacement time graph is given, and draw the velocity time graph. Now, again, uh, initially the velocity time graph was given, and they ask us to uh, find out displacement time graph. Right now, this is reverse. We can say displacement time graph is given, and now we want to find out velocity time graph. Chalo. So let's see. Now, again, this is a very difficult question. But it will obviously clear some of your concepts, right? Now consider. Let's take our example home to school, right? That is very simple to understand. So consider this is school, this is home, right? This is yes not. Let me give you value of yes not. Let's say yes not is five kilometer. So consider our home is origin. Now you can see at t is equal to zero. T is equal to zero means what? T is equal to our 10 a.m. Right? We are considering that t is equal to zero. So at t is equal to 10 a.m. or t is equal to zero, you are not at home. You are not at origin. Where are where are you? You are behind that home. Let's consider five kilometer. Right? I told you this is five kilometer. So consider there is ice cream shop like this, and now you are at which is at five kilometer. Let's say. So at t is equal to zero, 10 a.m. Where are you? At ice cream shop, simple. Okay, so this represents let's say ice cream shop. This is our ice cream shop. Okay, and uh, yes, uh, we want to go ahead now. Sure. So at t is equal to zero, you are at that point. So we want to find out the velocity now. Let's see how to find velocity. We will need some. Time for t not to i s by kilometer. Let's say. Let me give you one more value. Let's say t not is given as um, five seconds. I cannot read the in five seconds. No? Let's say five minutes. No. You can take this value as you need ten minutes for one kilometer. No, so this is one five kilometer. So fifty minutes. Let's say t is not is equal to fifty minutes. Let's take this value. Okay, sure. So what is the meaning of that? At t is equal to zero, mean ten a.m. You are at ice cream shop, which is five kilometer away from your home. Right. In fifty minutes, how much distance you covered? And I say you covered you where you reached actually at the origin. You reached at the origin, right? So you covered the five kilometer distance in fifty minutes. What is the velocity? Can I say five kilometer by fifty minutes? This is the velocity. So let's try to plot one graph of time versus um, our time versus. Now uh, let's let's make it a little bit simple. Consider this thirty minutes. Right, so instead of saying thirty minutes, or I can say one hour, right? So it will become simple. Half hour, okay. So v is equal to one half hour, or can I say this is ten kilometer per hour? Okay. So what is your velocity way at? So at ten t is equal to ten am. You started the journey. How much time it take half hour to reach at uh, place your home? What is your velocity? Ten kilometer per hour. So can I say at t is equal to zero you started after one hour or let's say thirty minutes? 
or half hour, right? Half hour, you reaches at your home. What is the velocity? 10 km per hour. Straight line. Straight line means what? Let's see. In the ST graph, straight line means what? Uniform motion. Velocity is constant. Good. Chalo. So if the velocity is constant, okay. So what I can say? If it is the velocity 10 km per hour, and after 30 minutes, the velocity is same 10 km per hour. Because you haven't changed the velocity, right? For constant velocity, we know the velocity time graph looks like straight line. Simple. And uh, after that, you let's say moves ahead. So after another half hour, you reaches to the school. But have you changed the velocity? No. Velocity is same. So this is the VT graph. Right? So there's a whole analysis. Now let's find out the very easy way. What they are asking? Forget everything for five kilometer. I just I was just giving you the example there. Now just consider this is the ST graph given, right? We know we already know ST graph and VT graph also. What you are going to do? Simply, if this is my ST graph, uh, it's look like a straight line, right? Straight line means what? Uniform motion. Uniform motion means what? Velocity is constant. Acceleration is zero. If the velocity is constant and acceleration is zero, then what we can see? Very simple. If the velocity is constant, so it is a straight line. Very simple. So we don't have to worry about anything. Just draw this graph velocity versus time graph. So V is constant. Very simple. So this is a whole conceptual thing. Or if you know the shapes of the graphs, you can easily say. That it will look like a straight line or parallel line. Okay. Sure. So let's move to the next one now. Ball is thrown vertically upward with velocity v. If the downward direction is considered positive, now here there is a twist in the equation, right? Uh, we have learned that uh, downward direction is what? Negative, right? We have taken g is negative and everything is negative. Right now, but what they are seeing here, take the downward direction positive. Okay. Let's see what it affects our graph. Plot the variation of velocity versus graph or versus time. So there are four options are given like this. And uh, we want to plot the velocity versus time. So ball is thrown vertically upward with velocity v. So if the downward is positive, downward is positive, upward will be what? Negative, right? So when you are throwing the ball upward, its velocity should be what? Negative, right? If we have done this type of question, velocity here, let's say 20 meter per second. In that question, we have taken it positive. Why? Because normal convention, sign convention says downward is negative, but they have changed it here. So we have to use their directions here. Okay. Now, this velocity is 20 meter per second, but negative. So can I say at t is equal to zero? t is equal to zero. It's Plot one graph also or table also, right? Let's try this table. At t is equal to zero. This is t graph. This is velocity. t is equal to zero. Can I say it is minus twenty now? That's right. Uh, if you do remember, at t is equal to two second, it reaches at the highest position, and t is equal to one second, it reaches. Let's calculate v is equal to u plus a t. If I use this formula. This becomes minus 20 plus 10 into 1. I can say minus 10. So V is equal to minus 10, right? We don't need actually this one, but let's plot this graph, right? At T is equal to 2 seconds, it reaches at the highest point. We have seen that part, okay? At 3 seconds, let's use this formula again. V is equal to what? U plus AT. U is minus 20. A now, A is equal to 10, right? We know that. We have taken negative, but here they have told us downward is positive. We can take this as positive into 3 or I can say 10. So 3 is 10. For 4 seconds, let's calculate. V is equal to U plus 80. And this is minus 20 plus 10 into 2. Right? 10 into 4. That becomes 20. So we know this kinematic equation. We can easily plot the values. So we have the values now. Let's plot the graph at T is equal to 0. V is equal to what? V naught. Let's say this is minus 20. 
this is also minus 20 so this graph could be uh, right this is 20 right so 20 is wrong this is also 20 wrong we need the minus 20 after one second it reaches here after two seconds it reaches at zero yes both graph shows that it, it reaches zero that's good after three seconds it is positive 10 positive 10 means what this part right this represents the positive 10 this represents the negative 10 so now we got the answer here this is wrong right so this should be our answer okay so this is how we can calculate the answers of the or solve the answer uh, questions graph okay so this is the whole chapter and uh, of the motion and time so we have seen that equations kinematic equations how to draw the graphs how to solve the questions of the graph very important things graphs are very important we should be able to analyze the graph right we should be able to plot the velocity time graph using the st time st graph also that's how we can actually do this okay sure so anyway, this is the whole chapter. If you do have uh, questions on this session or any any chapter on whole chapter, you can say you can put those questions in forum. So I will answer them as soon as possible. So I hope you enjoyed this session, right? And uh, so today we are going to stop here. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.